most of these can be used in a pretty genius way to be um, yeah, reproduced on a new board. To make the set align, we need something that's completely straight, of course, but also something that bends a little bit. A surfboard is an object that basically has curves everywhere. On the rails, on the bottom, on the top, the outline, everywhere full of curves. Now, how do I measure this object systematically to understand the shape and maybe to reproduce it systematically? So the basic method is to take multiple measurements on certain length points of the board. So I have this table and I marked on the board zero centimeters, by the way it's all in centimeters, uh, 0, 30, 60, 90, and I marked here 0, which is, by the way, right here, not here, because the board ends here, 0, 30, 60, 90, and so on. Now I transfer the measurements from the middle to the rail, because obviously some measurements I have to take at the rail, and I, don't, and I want to be really precise here, so I'll take this rect angle, And on these points, I measure certain things. <laughs> so we go through these step by step, I show you how. And in the end, this will be filled and this will make it really easy to understand the shape and to reproduce the shape if we want to and to make small changes to, to achieve certain things of the shape. Okay. First of all, we have the scoop rocker, and now I will uh, receive complaints already, I think, because in surfing it's called tail rocker and nose rocker. Now I come from windsurfing and I call the nose rocker scoop. And this basically means the curve of the board like this, so the whole line that is basically my tail. How do you measure this? As you can see here at 60 centimeters, I have a zero. So at 60 centimeters, which is right here, I want this to be, to touch the board. And now as you can see, I can measure this distance. On my points here at zero, or zero would be here, so I have to Make a special note here on the table. 30 is here, I will measure here. 60 is already zero, and then it goes on and on and on. And here in the front, oh, I actually have to correct the, my thing here. It's important, of course, to have a rect angle here and not measure like this or like this. And that's my first set of data. This is my scoop rocker line, simple as that. Next up is the width of the board, also really easy. So obviously the width of the board is from here to here. Uh, the first important thing is that we measure rectangular to the center line of the board. That's why I uh, transferred these steps here, 30, 60 and so on, to one rail, which is enough for this measurement. I could put it here as well, but um, it's enough if I go from this uh, mark to this mark, then I know I'm rectangular to the center line. So the perfect tool for that would be this. It's basically a giant, I don't know the English word, Schiebelehre, I put it here in English. Um, so this was a giant thingy, and this works like this, but it broke. So I'll do it differently. Um, I have my measure, my marks here, 0, 30, 60 and so on, and I put them also here with a rect angle. And so I can just measure from here to here and take a double, okay? Since I'm only doing one board, this is okay. So yeah, to make my center line longer, now, when we do this, it's important to be aware of the fact that the board has a round outline. I, this is my mark, and if I put my thing here right on the mark, 
then actually you can see that this is not the point I want to measure. This would need to be pointy in this area and have a really sharp edge here. So it's not perfect. And I could build a perfect one, but as I said, I'm only measuring one board and it's only to get a rough idea of how the shape looks to make a similar board. So I want to keep my effort low on this one. But if you want to be more precise, then go ahead. Okay, next up we have the thickness of the board. Sounds simple, but it's actually quite difficult to measure because the tool is quite difficult. You could again use a giant. Na -na -na. Um, this would be, uh, and this would have to be much longer, like this, approximately, and the other thing also. And you could then measure it like this. Only as I said, this has to go to the middle of the board, even here, so it would have to be much longer. But it would work. However, I made this tool, which would, looks really complicated, but makes the process much easier. Basically, it measures the width here, and I made a scale here, which again is not 100% precise, but it's by far enough for my purposes. The great thing about this one is it's really easy. See, just do it like that. Here I have these things, so this get, gets pulled up. And just have to do it like that. Now I can see it right here without bending over or, I don't know, difficult things. Now when we measure the rail, it's important to note two terms. This is the rail and we have the actual edge and we have the bottom edge. Well, about the last term, it's hard to find a general agreement on the internet about this term, but for this video, let's call it bottom edge. To make it more clear, the edge is where you would put a tangent to the rail, more precisely, a tangent that is rectangular to the bottom of the board. And the bottom edge is the edge where the rail meets the bottom of the board. This edge is very sharp in the tail of the board and is more round in the front of the board. The first thing we measure is how far is the widest point of the rail away from the bottom. So like this, and we measure this distance. 11 millimeters. Next, we measure the same thing, but not vertically, but horizontally. So we go like this, and we look at this distance. It's 4, no, 3.5. We see a problem here, as I said before, here this is round, it's really really round, so um, it's hard to say which point exactly we take because the tuck is basically not really visible. This uh, thing <laughs> touches the bottom at, I don't know, 23 millimeters, which would be here, but if I want to reshape the board and I, I think that here is the tuck, it would be not very beneficial so i estimate here because this is where the rail starts and then when i shape the board i i know that i need to round the tuck in this area okay so i put 15 in my table okay the last thing we measure about the rail is the five centimeter line which means how thick is the board? Five centimeters from the rail. And I do it with that. Um, it should be called 4.5 centimeter line because this distance is only 4.5 centimeters. But yeah, somehow I call it this way. And yeah, it's quite a good measurement to see how you're doing when you're shaping the rails. Okay, now we measure the bottom of the board and here we have basically three shapes. Uh, we have the V, which would be a bottom like this. That's really extreme. Like if, if, the, if the top of the board would be here, so this is the upper side of the board, this is the bottom, this is a V. Then we have the double concave, which would be this. 
and we have the concave, the monoconcave, which would be this. And of course, there are other shapes like the double concave, the, which is not that sharp in the middle, so it looks rather like this, or the V that's more rounded in the middle, or we have channels and stuff, um, and we can fill in all of this here in the notes section. But these are the major shapes that are that I found in board so far. And to do this, we need a straight piece of uh, metal. Metal is the best that has a really sharp edge here. So this is <laughs> this one is not perfect, but uh, somehow I don't find my professional measuring thing here uh, right now. But uh, this will work for this one. And I show you a few measurements. So here I'm at, I'm at my 30 centimeter line. And as you can see, I have a distance here. And this is the V. So as you can see, it's kind, kind of rocks. And here I have the V. And I measure it. 7 millimeters at 30 centimeters. But the V is not the only thing I have in this place. As you can see, I also have a concave here on this side of the board. And it's obviously a double concave because here is a concave and there's the same concave. I measure this one as well. Always be aware that this has to be in a right angle to the center line of the board. Two millimeters of concave. So, of double concave. So double concave and V can coexist. Obviously, a V and a monoconcave is contradictory, contradictory, so it can't coexist. Here I have the V double concave. So I have my bottom, I have the rails, I have the general measurements. Now I need to measure where the fins are. The center fin is really easy because it's parallel to the center line of the board. So I only measure where the fin starts for the side fins. Obviously, I have to do this and I measure this 30 plus 6 centimeters is oh, 9. <laughs> 39 centimeters. And I also measure, of course, this distance. And I measure to the inner side of the fin. I mark it like that. So this is my box. Put my mark here. 16 and this thing is more difficult to measure because as you might know the center fins are not parallel to the center line they are slightly off that 16.4 okay that's it this is what i need to rebuild this board pretty precisely which is not my plan i'm building a slightly different board out of xps with a kind of a new interesting method if you want to see that then uh, follow my channel and I will upload the video in a few weeks, hopefully. I have a lot of material to cut. Um, and it will be quite interesting how these measurements transfer into the shape and into the shaping process. Because you will see that um, most of these can be used in a pretty genius way to be um, yeah, reproduced on a new board. My experience showed that this is pretty much enough to make a really good copy of the board. Like I, I copied this board is actually a copy from another board, so I'm copying the same board kind of again. And it's pretty, pretty similar. This is my eco board project, actually, if you want to see how this was built. Uh, put the link in the description. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting and not very successful build.